darkness. Impenetrable and fearful. Tombs where no man is ever allowed to go in. And only a wo only woman, priestesses, are allowed to go in. A safeguard tomb. And a cursed girl. Hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Erin the Book Quester. Today I have this epic, awesome fantasy book for you guys today. Ursia to Ursi Cycle 2, The Tombs of Atuan by Ursula K. Lee Gwynn. And, well, let's get right on to it. It has the Newberry Honor, which is super surprising because not even the greatest works of Tolkien and C.S. Lewis has has Newberry Honor. They have the Literature Award, a Fantasy Literature Award, but they don't have this this awesome award. And well, I, this is the first ever book that had first ever fantasy book that I ever saw with a Newberry Honor. And well, let's actually get onto the story. This book is about a girl named Arha who was taken by priestesses, a masked executioner who wants her to become a priestess of the nameless ones, shadows, darkness, and she she is forced to have power, power that she is she's the dark one, she's the eaten one, she's the one who who makes sure that the dark, the nameless ones are are happy, and the darkness is her reign, and that's what she thinks. Until she finds out that the real power is within other priestesses. Priestesses who pretend that they are on her side, but actually is not. And deep inside the tombs, there is a great treasure. The Half Ring of Aerith Akbe. Aerith Akbe, the Lord of the Wizards, who is referred to as Lord by all modern wizards, and is one of the greatest of them all. He was a dragon lord. He was the greatest ever wizard who ever lived before the first ever wizard. And then, and then, the ring of Arathakbe was lost to history. One half was very, very secure inside the tombs of Atuan. But the other one, where did it go? And we find found out that in the book one, Jed, or Lord Sparrowhawk, finds the ring in an abandoned island where two very, very old people who didn't even know how to speak, who were probably dumped on that island when they were, they were very, very young, they gave him a gift, the ring. And now he comes with a wizard with his wizardry and light. Light, the most important of all. And he brings the ring of Aerith Akbe in order to unite it with its other half, so that it may be restored to the island of the kings, Havnor. And he goes, he goes in deep into the tombs of Atuan, and of course Arha catches him. And at first, she, she wants nothing but to find creative ways to kill Jed, Lord Sparrowhawk, because that's her duty, she's the priestess. But then, uh, when she tries to goad him, tries to m make him admit that her power was greater than his, well, he admitted, and Jed, he doesn't care about power. He doesn't care that he, if he's power stronger than, or his or are his power stronger than him. He has one purpose. Defeat the darkness, keep order in the world, and take the ring of Arathakbe, united, and may peace reign. And so, Arha, at first, be trying to, trying to make, make our dear Jed despair, but she can't do that, because he's so patient, he's such a wizard, and Tanah, and our dear Arha, and she can't make Sparrowhawk despair. And Lord Sparrowhawk, he is a wizard, he is the finder of true names. 
and he calls Arha by her actual name, Tenar, the name that was given to her by her mother. And using, using that name, she said he told tells Tenar that you don't have to stay here in the darkness when there's so much light within you, that you can go out, you can come with him, with with Jed, and so Sparrowhawk and Tenar gets out of the tombs of Atuan where the nameless ones stand strong, and he tells Tenar that. The nameless ones are powerful, they are primordial, they are darkness, but they are not to be worshipped, but to be forgotten and banished. And he takes Tenar to the halls of Havnor, where the ring of Aerith Akbe is restored, the sign of peace. And after that, between the Kargs, the white-skinned ones, who is, you know, who is... The kind that our dear Tenar is, and the the black skinned ones or the nutty skinned ones, they there's peace between them because the ring of Arathakwe once united is the eternal sign of peace between the Kargs and I can't pronounce the name of the island people. It was an awesome book, and it has a Newberry Medal because of the I don't I don't I don't know, but there's so much things, so much reasons why this could have the Newberry Medal. First of all, it talks a lot about life and death and the balance between those two things. It tells to embrace death as life, and it really talks about those things. And and second. It's reversed, kind of. It's it's kind of interesting when you look at it because in in the book, the the Kargs, the white skinned people, are savages, as the white skinned people in the Age of Discovery called the black skinned people savages, and it's kind of reversed, so it's kind of funny. And the Kargs, the white skinned ones, call the mages, the wizards, the black skinned ones. Well, savages, and both of them are civilized as each other, so it's kind of funny in my opinion, and it is an awesome book, one of the best books that I have ever read, a very enjoyable fantasy book, and like always, your book quester and the book quester, an awesome book, a great fantasy where wizards and darkness fights against each other.